Well, a huge welcome to our Sunday service. We gathered as a church this afternoon to, to worship, pray, hear God's word, catch up together. Um, and just in case you weren't able to join us, or maybe because you're looking in, you're not a part of Kings, well, we're so glad you're with us and really hope this serves you and blesses you. We're going to sing a couple of songs together. We're then going to open the, the Bible. And the question today is, uh, why is the Holy Spirit so important? Why is the Holy Spirit so important? Uh, maybe you've never heard of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you have loads of questions about the Holy Spirit. Well, this is a great Sunday for you to tune in. And we really hope it, uh, like I say, blesses you and serves you well. So let's worship together. We're going to sing a couple of songs. When peace like a river attended my way When sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my lot thou hast told
Uh, guys, I want to say a massive thank you to our worship team. Uh, for me, one of the highlights of lockdown has been seeing these worship videos come together. And I, I'm just amazed that we have so many musicians in the church. And thank you so much for serving uh, Dan and Davey, Luke and Shah, Luke and Ann Lee, uh, Becky, Claire, Libs, Lloyd. Amazing to have so many different people contributing, serving us, blessing us, and also blessing those out with the church. So well done. Thank you so much for your serving. I just want to say two things today. We're in a series on the Holy Spirit. And I want to say two things about the Holy Spirit. Firstly, the Holy Spirit is so, so good. Like, so, so good. And then I want to look at receiving the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is so, so good. We're actually then going to have a break. We're going to watch a worship song, a chance to reflect and digest. And then we'll come back and talk about receiving the Holy Spirit. And my prayer is for us as a church and for you as an individual, that this wouldn't just fill your mind, this wouldn't just be a knowledge that is placed in your head, but actually this would lead us to an experience of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what it's meant to be. We are meant to experience the Holy Spirit in our life. The Holy Spirit is a gift. I don't know what the best ever gift you've been given is. Uh, for me, I remember back to my childhood uh, getting given a, a Swiss army knife. And I love the outdoors and I got given this Swiss army knife. It had my name engraved on it and it had loads of different things. It had knives and saws and bottle openers and tweezers, uh, even something for taking the, the shoes off a horse. Don't know why you'd ever need that. I don't know what your best ever gift has been, but the Holy Spirit is even better. In fact, he's the best gift that you could receive. Uh, and he's described as a gift. That's how he is described by Jesus. Uh, he said to his followers, Wait in Jerusalem for the gift that my father promised. And then on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit had been poured out, Peter describes it as a gift. And he says to the crowds, repent, be baptised, your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift that is available to believers. And it's so good. And in fact, Jesus said remarkable words. He said, it's better that I go away, because if I go away, I will send the Holy Spirit to you. I mean, that is remarkable. Jesus basically said, it's better that I leave you, because then you'll receive the Spirit. And that's going to be better than having me there in the flesh. So this is a gift that is available to us from God, that is better than having the physical Jesus in our midst. Wow. And I want to give you reasons why the Holy Spirit is so good. Maybe to, to raise your appreciation and hopefully your desire and your hunger for the Holy Spirit by telling you why is it such a good, such an important gift in the life of the believer. And it's so multifaceted. It's a bit like that Swiss Army knife where you had blades and saws and all these different things. The Holy Spirit does a whole range of different things in the life of a believer. And I was just going to mention three, but as I was going through, I realised, my goodness, the Holy Spirit does so much. And so I want to mention 18 things in five minutes, if that's possible. So 18 reasons, 18 things that the Holy Spirit does, why he is so good and so important in your life. So firstly, the Holy Spirit brings joy. And uh, as if by magic, the Bible verses are going to appear on the side, but the Holy Spirit brings joy. That's what it says. It says, uh, in fact, in 1 Thessalonians, in the midst of severe suffering, joy given by the Holy Spirit. And that's amazing. Even if life is hard, severe suffering, it can feel like everything's fallen apart on the surface. We can know a deep inner joy given to us by the Holy Spirit. Number one. And number two, the Holy Spirit brings the closeness of God. Uh, Luke talked last week about this word parakletos, which is a word used to describe the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it's translated as helper, sometimes counsellor, comforter, advocate. It's quite a hard word to translate. But all of those translations have the same sense. And it's one of closeness. It's someone that comforts, someone that comes alongside and counsels or stands and advocates for us. The Holy Spirit brings the closeness of God to us in our Christian life. The Holy Spirit teaches us. Uh, for me, that was... The biggest thing that I noticed when I first experienced being filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'd been a Christian a number of months. I'd been reading my Bible and it, but 
I, I suddenly was filled with the Holy Spirit and it was like the Bible came alive. It was like I was reading the same stuff, but suddenly could understand it. Things were jumping off the page. The Holy Spirit can do that. He teaches us. He brings uh, to remembrance things that Jesus has said. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness. Uh, in Acts chapter 4, and the book of Acts is a remarkable book. In Acts chapter 4, they're in a prayer meeting. It says the whole place was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Now, I don't know if you ever feel like you need more boldness. Uh, I am certainly naturally a timid, shy person. And I don't know about you, but if you find it hard to share your faith, then we need the boldness given to us by the Holy Spirit. He brings love. He pours in love into our hearts. He uh, gives us hope. It talks about overflowing with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, I could just stop here. I mean, I, I, joy, hope, love, boldness, closeness of God. These are wonderful things that the Holy Spirit does. But let's go on. Uh, he gives us wisdom. It talked about Stephen with, uh, with a wisdom given by the Spirit. He encourages us. Uh, listen to this. Living in the fear of the Lord, encouraged by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and encourages us. He brings peace into our minds. I mean, I don't know if your mind, maybe particularly in lockdown, is feeling troubled and confused. And maybe your th thoughts get out of control at times. The Holy Spirit can bring you peace in your mind. He helps us conquer sin. By the spirit, we put to death the misdeeds of the flesh, of the body. I mean, if you're struggling to overcome sin, what you need is not more resilience or some self-help guides. What you need is more of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one that helps us overcome sin in our lives. He gives us assurance. There's loads of verses about the Holy Spirit giving us assurance of salvation, giving us that deep down, do you know, I just know that I'm a child of God. I just know that God loves me. I, it just it gives us, it talks about crying out, Abba, Father. It's like the Holy Spirit just makes us know that we're in this relationship. It gives us an assurance of salvation. He helps us to pray. It says if the Spirit helps us pray in our weakness. If you find prayer hard, you need more of the Holy Spirit. He gives us wonderful gifts. There's uh, two whole passages there, 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12. Both of those lifts gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amazing things like prophecy and tongues and healing and miracles and uh, words of wisdom and words of knowledge and faith. These are supernatural gifts given by the Holy Spirit for us. Power. I don't know if you ever feel powerless, but the promise is you will receive power when the Spirit comes on you. That's what the disciples were promised. Wait for this gift and you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. He grows fruit in our lives. There's a famous passage in Galatians 5 talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, how he grows love and joy and peace and patience, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. Man, self-control and patience. Maybe it's just because I'm a parent, but I feel, man, there's times where I just need more patience and more self-control. Well, it's the Holy Spirit that is going to grow those things in our lives. He sets us free. If there's things in your life where you are just feel like you are in chains or in bondage, the Spirit will set you free. You get to know Jesus better. The Holy Spirit helps us know Jesus better. And he gives us an inner strength. Love, joy, hope, encouragement, power, boldness, gifts, fruit, knowing Jesus better, assurance of salvation and inner strength. The Holy Spirit is so good. In fact, when I look at that list, I realise this is this was never meant to be an extra add on to the Christian life. The Holy Spirit is not an optional extra. This is the Christian life. The Holy Spirit was meant to be a spirit. Sorry, the, the Christian life was meant to be a spirit filled life. Jesus said, wait, wait, don't do anything. Don't go anywhere until you've been clothed with power by the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit if we are going to live effective Christian lives.
If we're going to be those that are conquering sin and overcoming the world and preaching the gospel boldly and living with hope in the midst of severe suffering and all these things we've mentioned, boy, do we need the Holy Spirit. And so I want to encourage you, the Holy Spirit is so good. Let's desire more of the Holy Spirit. Uh, We're described or we're meant to be a community. This is in 1 Corinthians 3, that we are God's temple. It's talking about us as a church. We are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in our midst. Not just individually, but as a community, we are to be those that are full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is so, so good. And I hope you're convinced. And in fact, I hope, I really hope that you're not just sitting there nodding, but you're sitting there thinking, wow, (laughs) wow, maybe I've underestimated the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I want this more than ever. I want us to desire and to thirst more than ever for the Holy Spirit. So let's, let's, we're going to go into a worship song. Why don't you just, as we listen to the words, respond and say, God, I want more of your Holy Spirit. I want to experience all of what has just been described. Open yourself up to him. And then we're going to come back and talk about receiving the Holy Spirit. Peace like a river, wash over me. Immerse me in water as deep as the sea. like a river wash over me as I worship your majesty I worship your Come on, we spirit. Come on, we spirit. 
I don't know what your experience of water is. Uh, maybe you think immediately of this week when it's been quite hot. Maybe you've got a nice refreshing glass of water that cooled you down. There's been times in my life where I've burnt myself and I, I've just enjoyed water cooling down and soothing that burn. There's been times where I've been out in the rain and got wet. Um, and actually there's been times when I've got really, really wet. Uh, I've been out on the hills with pounding rain for hours on end and I thought I knew what it was to be wet, but now, man, I'm soaked. I know what it is to be really wet. And there's been times when I've experienced the power of water. Uh, I remember a time as a child being pinned down by waves at the sea, I'm literally pounded by the waves and the force of the sea. But then I'd never been to somewhere like Niagara Falls, where I imagine just the immense power of the water is just tangible. And you, you see, we experience water in different ways. And our experience of the Holy Spirit will be different for different ones of us. For some, there'll be a gentle soothing. Uh, for some, it'll be like a cooling. For some, it'll be feel like a drenching. For others, it'll just feel like power is pounding upon you. And all of those are valid. We are complicated. The God is complicated. And the way that he interacts with us by the Holy Spirit might look different. And that's OK. But I do want to say two things. Two general points about receiving the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the first one is baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is a Bible phrase. Uh, in fact, in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John and the book of Acts, you come across this phrase, baptism in the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was the first one that used it. He said, I baptise you in water, but one coming after me will baptise you in the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus uses it. Uh, before he ascends back to heaven, when he's talking about waiting in Jerusalem, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. He says, John baptised with water. In a few days, you're going to be baptised with the Holy Spirit. He describes Pentecost as baptism in the Holy Spirit. And maybe it's helpful to know the word baptism or baptizo in Greek means to immerse or to overwhelm. So, so it's got that imagery of being uh, drenched or just yeah, overwhelmed, immersed in the Holy Spirit. It's like John baptised you, he immersed you in water. You're going to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. 
And all through the book of Acts, we see that happening. We see people encountering and being immersed in the Holy Spirit, a baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it's on offer for you and for me. Um, so Pentecost is a great example. They're in the upper room. Uh, they've been praying for maybe nine or ten days. And it says suddenly the Holy Spirit came on them. There were tongues of fire, a violent wind, and poof, they knew it. They knew they'd been filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, in Acts chapter 8, it says the apostles prayed for the new believers because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on them. New believers, the apostles lay on their hands, they pray, and the Holy Spirit comes on them. In Acts chapter 10, this is in Cornelius' household. If you know the story, you have some God-fearing Gentiles. Uh, they ask Peter to come to them. Peter starts preaching, and halfway through his talk, poof, it says the Holy Spirit came on them. And uh, Peter actually describes it in Acts 11 as they were baptised in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit over immersed them and drenched them. Uh, you see in Acts 19 uh, in Ephesus, Paul meets some believers. They're called disciples. Uh, it says that they were believers. And he says the question, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And it's a really good question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Spirit as a believer? You see, in all of the Bible accounts, people knew the Holy Spirit had come on them. In the book of Acts, Pentecost, they knew the Holy Spirit had come. It was like, okay, we've the, the wait is over, we have been filled, and then they went out and started preaching boldly. Uh, in Ephesus, in Cornelius' house, they could look and say, do you know, they were filled with the Spirit. Uh, Paul often uses the phrase, when you receive the Spirit, when the Spirit came on you, it's meant to be a moment that we were aware of when we were just flooded with the Spirit. Has that happened for you? Because if not, the great news is there is a gift available. You can be flooded or baptised in the Holy Spirit. For me, it was when I was 17. I'd been a Christian a number of months. I was in a meeting and someone came and laid their hands on me, prayed for me and I was just flooded. I, it was the first time I'd experienced the Holy Spirit. Um, I experienced a love and a joy and a peace. Uh, this assurance of salvation that hasn't left me. Um, I spoke in tongues for the first time. The Holy Spirit is meant to be something that you experience. Has that happened for you? Because this is a gift. This is not a reward. It's not a sign of holiness. This is a gift. If we call out to God, if we thirst, it's something that we can all receive. It's not meant to be something to be proud of. That's a danger. Second danger is we need to go on being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you can point to a moment when you were filled with the Spirit, guess what? You're meant to go on being filled with the Spirit. It was never meant to be a one-off event. And that's my second point. Go on being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible describes. In fact, uh, you see it, the, the disciples in, uh, in the book of at the end of the book of John, in John 20, it says Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And in the same group of people in, in uh, Acts chapter 2, Pentecost, they're baptised in the Holy Spirit. But then again, in Acts chapter 4, in the prayer meeting, the place is shaken and it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So they received the spirit, they're baptised in the spirit, then they're filled again. And it's like, well, the point is you go on being filled. Whatever your experience of the Holy Spirit is to date, there is more for you to experience. Jesus tells us to be thirsty. He said this here, on the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up in a loud voice and said, if anyone is thirsty... Come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this, he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. So that's the promise. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And rivers of living water will flow up. By this, he meant the spirit. So that's the prerequisite. Well, probably two prerequisites. The first one is, you need to repent and put your faith in Jesus. This is for the believer. If you haven't done that, if you're not sure if you're a Christian, step one is to repent. That means turn away from your sin 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and have your sins washed away. It's actually what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. says, repent, be baptised, your sins will be forgiven and then you'll receive the gift of the Spirit. So maybe you're in that category. Maybe you need to do that first. Maybe you need to turn from your sin and put your faith in Jesus. If that's true of you, then you, you, there's a moment where they're called the baptism in the Holy Spirit that is available for you. Or maybe you can look to a baptism in the Holy Spirit. Well, for you, it's let's go on being filled. So really, category two and category three, the, the response is the same. Thirst for more of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus says. Come all who are thirsty and I will cause the spirit to well up within you. So I want to just ask you and I want to ask myself to be thirsty for the Holy Spirit and to pray and to hunger and maybe to fast and to go after God and say, God, I'm not going to let go until you flooded me again with your Holy Spirit. We live in such an instant generation. We uh, have microwave food that you just ping it and it's done. We're, we're used to like Amazon Prime where you can deliver something and it arrives the next day. We're not very good at waiting. But I think this is something that sometimes you have to wait for. God wants us to be thirsty and that might mean that you have to pray and pray and pray some more and maybe fast and go after God until you experience more of the Holy Spirit. That's certainly what I'm doing and what I'm going to be doing in these next weeks. God, I want to know more of your Holy Spirit. The experience that I've had, I know this isn't everything that you've got for me. I want more of your Holy Spirit. You could respond by reading the book of Acts. That's a great place to start. The book of Acts is full of people encountering the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you've never read it, why don't you read it alongside praying, God, I want your Holy Spirit. It says in Galatians, by faith, we receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. And you know, reading the book of Acts is going to raise your faith that this is something that is for you. And then finally, I just want to say this. The Holy Spirit is great at coming behind locked doors. There's, there's times in the book of Acts where the, uh, the apostles and others lay hands on people and it says they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And we can't do that. We can't have a ministry time now where we lay hands on you and we pray God fill you with the Holy Spirit. But, you know, we can pray in our bedrooms and the Holy Spirit is great at coming on people. Like on the day of Pentecost, locked away behind closed doors, that is not a barrier for the Holy Spirit to come. Let me just finish with a couple of testimonies of people experiencing the Holy Spirit. Martin Lloyd-Jones, uh, speaking on the life of Howell Harris, a leading preacher in the Welsh Revival. He says, what I would emphasise is that Harris was already converted. He'd already received forgiveness of sins and he knew he had it and he'd been dancing in joy. But it was now just over three weeks later that he received this crucial experience, which turned him into a flaming evangelist. He says, this is how I descri he described it. Suddenly I felt my heart melting within me like wax before a fire and love to God for my saviour. I felt not only love but peace and a longing to die and be with Christ. Then came a cry in my soul from within that I'd never known before. Abba, Father, I could do nothing but call God my Father. I knew that I was his child and he loved me and was listening to me. That was his encounter with the Holy Spirit. Uh, R.A. Torrey. I'd been a minister for some years before I came to a place where I saw that I had no right to preach until I was definitely baptised with the Holy Ghost. Then just as far as I could, I shut myself up alone in my study and spent time continually on my knees asking God to baptise me with the Holy Spirit. I recall the exact spot where I was kneeling within prayer in my study. It was a quiet moment, one of the quietest moments I've ever known. Then God simply said to me, in my heart, it's yours. Now go and preach. I love how all these experiences are different. Duncan Campbell, uh, involved in the revivals in the, in the Hebrides. Listen, friends, as I lay there, God, the Holy Ghost came upon me. Wave after wave came rolling over me until the love of God swept through me like a mighty river. So much that there were moments. Now, listen, my daughter beside me put my hand on her sh my shoulders and prayed. Oh, God, keep him. Give, keep his reason to daddy. 
but I was never more sane in my life. But I was so wrought by the Holy Ghost that I cried and I laughed and I prayed. Um, and then one final one, Charles Finney, another great evangelist. As I turned and was about to take a seat by the fire, I received a mighty baptism of the Holy Ghost without any expectation of it, without ever having the thought in my mind that there was such a thing for me, without any recollection that I'd ever heard the thing mentioned in person, the Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression like a wave of electricity going through and through me. Indeed, it seemed to come in waves of liquid love. I could not express it in any other way. Do you know, people experience the Holy Spirit differently. Uh, I love it how there was a testimony there of someone in their study, just God came on them in a quiet way. There's others where it was like waves of electricity, others where it's like liquid love. And do you know, the Holy Spirit might meet with you in any or all of these ways. But let's be thirsty. Let's go after God. Let's pray that he would baptise us and fill us and that we would have more experiences of his Holy Spirit. For the sake of you, for the sake of the church, for the sake of Scotland, for the sake of the nations, for the sake of the kingdom. We need you, Holy Spirit. Well, I'd love to pray for you uh, off the back of that message. Um, Father, I pray for every listener now and ask in Jesus' name for an encounter with the Holy Spirit. That even now as they're listening, they would just feel your presence and would experience your Holy Spirit. And God, even through this week, I want to pray for many stories of encounters with the Holy Spirit, this wonderful gift that is available to us and ask for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, we're coming to the end of our time together. It's been so good having you with us. And I just want to encourage you this week. Why don't you pray every morning? God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And uh, we're going to be praying for you that you would experience the Holy Spirit in your life. And just as a follow up, if you're part of Kings, we are gathering uh, the ladies together on Wednesday night. So instead of our normal midweek groups, we're gathering all the ladies this Wednesday. We're going to gather all the guys next week. Uh, and that'll be just a chance to pray for one another and uh, respond off the back of this message. So we'd love to have you there if you're part of uh, King's Church. Um, guys, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Hope you have a fantastic week and keep pursuing the Holy Spirit. He is so good. Amen.